You are now listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. In today's interview, Dr. Taylor covers fasting. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. All right, welcome to the Real Health Podcast. As always, I am your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, and I'm really excited about this topic. We're going to bring you a live interview uh, with one of our patients who is really has a lot of, I would consider, expertise in this area. She's not a, a physician, but she's just done a lot of her own personal research. And this is a topic that, you know, nothing can gain expertise more than experience in. And that is the topic of fasting. So before we get to the interview, I want to give, you know, a brief background on fasting because it's gaining a lot of popularity these days. And people are hearing about fasting. Intermittent fasting is really popular. Uh, Bone broth fasting or or drinking bone broth especially. Juice fasting has been popular for for many years now. I think that that one's kind of losing popularity because of the, you know, massive spikes in, in blood sugar that it still gives. But it still gives, you know, amazing health benefits. And we're definitely going to talk about that. But, you know, I I just want to touch on, you know, what is this uh, concept of fasting? And one of the things that I love about it is that fasting is a biblical concept, you know, so it's not just a new trend. It's been around forever. And the Bible says it's not if you fast, it's when you fast. So fasting has been a part of, you know, culture for thousands and thousands of years. And it's just now starting to regain popularity because, you know, like everything, you know, like a paleo diet, we're starting to realize that these ancient healing principles are still just as relevant today. And one of the things with fasting is I think that it's pretty intimidating to people, you know, not intermittent fasting. You know, skipping breakfast isn't isn't that scary, um, but you know, to go for four days, to go for seven days, to go for longer than that on something like juice, on something like bone broth, on something like whey water, or on nothing is pretty intimidating. But what we always say and remind people of is, if we put you on a deserted island, you know, and you had water you're going to survive. So your body, you know, knows what to do and it actually can, uh, you know, regulate itself. It's great for detoxification. It's great to give your digestive system a rest. It's great for your brain and your mental clarity and to just clear things out. So, you know, it has great spiritual benefits uh, and also has great health benefits. And, you know, you can do it as one. You can do it as the other. You know, a lot of churches will do annual fasts. My problem with that is that, you know, it's great for, for spiritual reasons, but then you finish your fast and then the other, you know, 355 days of the year you eat junk. Uh, that's, you know, kind of negating the, the benefits there. And, and the opposite is true that, you know, if you're doing a fast just to lose weight or just to drop 10 pounds quickly, you know, I don't think that that's very good either. So, you know, a combination of the two is really, really beneficial. And so, you know, we're going to get into this interview because Tara has a lot of experience with fasting. So first thing I want to talk about is, you know, different types of fasting that Tara and I talk about. We talk about juice fasting, okay? That's how she got into fasting. Then we talk about a uh, oh, master's cleanse, actually. That's how she got into fasting. So that's a, another one, a popular, a popular cleanse that's out there, the master's cleanse. So master's cleanse, juice fasting, bone broth fasting, whey water fasting. We don't talk about that one as much in the interview, but she has done whey water fasts, also very, very powerful uh, way of fasting. Uh, And then strict fasting or water fasting. Now, so those are some of the different types of fasting. Now, the next thing that I want to mention is there's different lengths and different, uh, you know, I guess types, again, uh, of ways to do this with these with these things. So, you know, strict fasting is not eating and just drinking water. Um, There's also, you know, you can do intermittent fasting, like I mentioned. That's going, you know, a certain amount of time in between meals, usually about 16 hours in between meals. Meaning if you ate dinner at eight o'clock at night, you skip breakfast the next day and you don't eat until noon. And you can do that on a daily basis. It's been shown to boost human growth hormone, been shown to have a lot of really good just metabolic 
effects. So a lot of people do intermittent fasting. You can do a, what's called a block fast, which is a few days. Now we talk about in this interview, what I would re recommend is going four days. Okay, so, and, and she mentions with her experience that that fourth day is really when the magic happens. And day three, you often don't feel that good, but day four, you know, I've had patients do fast, and day four, they're saying, oh my gosh. Day three, they're saying, oh my gosh, I can't make it to day four. Day four, they're saying, oh, I think I'm gonna go another day. And they end up going, you know, six, seven, eight days. And then there's extended fasting, which I would say is a little bit longer. Now, block fasting, you can do, you know, once a month, really. I know people that do four-day block fast once a month or every other month. Uh, and extended fasting is going out longer. That's a little more of a, a bigger pill to, to swallow. You don't want to do those nearly as often, but very, very healing, very, very beneficial. Another one that's actually gaining popularity right now is every other day fasting. And that's a great way to kind of break in to fasting. Just go dinner to dinner one day and make sure that you know you feel okay. Then the next day, eat. Then go dinner to dinner the day after. There's actually a lot of research coming out of the University of Illinois at Chicago about the metabolic benefits that they're seeing with every other day fasting. So I think that that's a great, you know, kind of introductory way, more like an intermittent fasting. And you could do a combo of these two. You could fast one day a week then you can intermittent fast the other days of the week. Then like, uh, you can fe feast one day a week. So you can mix and match these types of fasting. But let's get right into it with our patient, Tara, and her experience with a lot of different varieties of different types and different durations of fasting. All right, welcome to another Real Health Podcast interview. I'm really excited to bring you this interview with our patient Tara and Tara is you know an awesome patient uh, but and we just actually you know adjusted what all six of your family members and, and so you know great family uh, but one of the cool things about Tara too is you know you found us through the Real Health Podcast. You listened to some podcast episodes, you saw some YouTube videos, and then you came in as a patient, and you know, we've learned a lot from you. I think that you've learned you know, a lot through, through our resources too, like the podcast, but we've learned a lot from you too. And today what we're gonna talk about is you know, one of the things that I've probably learned you know, the most from you about, and that is fasting. And fasting is you know, becoming a more popular topic but this isn't, you know, a 2000 and, and uh, 2016, 2017 type of topic. This is, you know, an ancient, age-old topic. And one of the things that I love about fasting is that, you know, the Bible says it's not if you fast, it's when you fast. It was more of an expected thing uh, from a biblical standpoint. But fasting is something that now is starting to uh, catch buzz in the modern times. You know, a new book just came out about fasting that's, that's pretty popular. There's bone broth fast, there's juice fast, there's intermittent fasting, and there's block or extended fasts. And quite frankly, you know, you've done a little bit of all of them. So I want to ask you, you know, you're, you're very knowledgeable you know, spiritually and health-wise. So what initially, you know, led you to, to learn about fasting or where did you initially learn about it? Um, let's see, it was, I mean, it was, a, it's a progression. It was a progression. Um, I was just like everybody else and eating a, you know, a diet that was not uh, very, you know, it's very man-made, everything from man and very toxic, but um, so I was just, you know, looking for health, I was looking for real health, and I went the direction, you know, went, of course, the direction that most people go, Western medicine, that doesn't do anything except cause more symptoms and more problems and more dis-ease in the body. So I went the route of, you know, looking for the way that, you know, Yahuwah, Yah, um, who I call Yah, most people call him Lord or God. The Hebrew, it's his Hebrew set apart name, and I call him Yahuwah, which he had commanded us in his word to, to actually call out his name, and that is his name. So he's the one that directed me in the path of, of cleansing, of fasting, um, dealing with uh, my own uh, issues and health issues and, and symptoms that I was going through. I wanted to seek more of him, knowing that 
He was, he is the great physician. He is my only physician. So did you do it for spiritual reasons or for health reasons or kind of, kind of a combination? Both. both. I, I think they're synonymous. Um, you can't yeah, have I think one that's the, the cool the thing other. about fasting. Right. Can't have one without the other. And so it took a great paradigm shift for me. It was, yeah. a, it was a progression. Um, so how'd you, well. how'd you start? What was your How first thing that you learned first? about about fasting? Because you said you've done juice fasting at right. first, but you don't do juice fasting as much now. Right. So is that how you started? Um, I started, and actually I did, I forgot to say that, I, I actually started with a master cleanse. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's how a lot of people start, right? With either ju a juice right. cleanse, right. you know, and, and now, I don't know what year this was, but now a lot of people have seen the movie Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. Right, yeah. And so they, they see Joe Cross and they do, or maybe they don't do a full 30-day juice fast, uh -huh. but they do a three-day or a four-day juice fast, or they do a master cleanse. Right, right. How long did you do a master cleanse for? Um, I did it for, uh, I think it was 21 days. One time, the first time was like 10 days, and then the second time was 21 days. How'd you feel? I felt good. I mean, from what I came from, I felt yeah. really good, you know. But now hearing about, you know, the maple syrup being very, you know, making your glucose, you know, high. And and it's not, and I guess you could do it without the maple syrup and just do lemon and cayenne, which are very healing for the body and very yeah. cleansing for the body. Um, and, you know, add some other uh, herbs, you know, or spices that are, you know, really healthy for the body. But I didn't know at that time. But I did feel good. I mean, it did help. I mean, it did probably break, you know, loose things up in my body to, you know, prepare it for more, you know, healing. Yeah. So. And one of the things that we're going to get to, I don't want to talk about it quite yet, but Tara's done a 28-day a water fast, and, and we're going to get to that. Um, so then after the master cleanse, then what, then did you did a juice fast? Yeah, juice fast. How long have you gone with, with juicing? Juicing. I did, the longest I had done was uh, 15 days. Okay. So I did 15 days and I actually went into a water fast. That was my first, uh, you know, actual attempt to go into a water fast. I kind of wanted to prepare myself a little bit by just liquid, yeah. you know, a liquid diet, I guess. And um, thought that would be a good, you know, jump start for me to get into a water. And it was. So you've got a, a, a pretty wide variety of, of long extended fasts. Uh, you know, double digit days doing the, the master cleanse for that long, doing a juice cleanse for that long. I know you've done a, a couple water fasts, you know, that long. And we'll talk about those. What's the longest that you've done with bone broth? Bone broth. Um, I did 15 days. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and, and let's talk about that one for a second, because that's one of my favorites, you know, if, if you're going to be consuming something, you know, a lot of yours have been strict fasts and water fasts, but bone broth fasts are, are very healing mm. uh, for the gut. And we actually have, you know, articles on, on the Real Health blog, and those are written by Tara. Okay, so Tara is one of the, one of the people that not introduced me to the concept of bone broth fasting, I, I knew about it, but really introduced me into the, the how. And she provided me with bones and taught me how to, how to you know, make bone broth. Uh, you know, and now, you know, you just brought me some bones recently. And so now when you go to the farm, I say, hey, can you pick me up some, <laughs> some good grass-fed bones and bring them to me? I need to make some broth. So what got you into bone broth fasting? And when did you learn about the, the healing benefits of that? Or oh, yeah. can you talk about what are some of the, the healing benefits of bone broth? Because, you know, somebody listening might say, you know, bone broth, what, what is bone broth? Um, how I was first introduced was through, um, most people know, I guess, maybe the GAPS diet the oh, GAPS yeah. protocol. And um, so if you don't know, that's a, a GAPS diet, it's an acronym, it stands for Gut and Psychology Syndrome, or there's another name too, a Gut and Physiology, it's, it's kind of interchangeable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a, uh, you know, heavy in the autism world and good for gut healing. It's pretty intense, it's pretty long term. Um, but it's designed to, to help heal your gut, and they use a lot of different broths, a lot of different soups and stews. So that's where you learned about bone broth fasting. Right, yeah, and that basically prepared me. That basically prepared me to um, to be, I guess, to do an, a long extended fast because the diet or the you know the style of eating for gaps is so strict that. Um, you know, just kind of prepared me to get to be ready for that and learning about the, the bone broth and all of the healing components, all the 
nutritional density that it contained. Um, and yeah, of course, the healing of the gut, that was my, my focus, was to heal my leaky gut. Yeah, and, and we talk about this in our Real Health webinar, uh, you know, the leaky gut or gut health webinar. So if you're curious to learn more about kind of, we, we call it kind of a mini gaps, our leaky gut protocol. A mini gaps, our leaky gut protocol, but it starts off with a, a period of bone broth fasting. So if you're curious on that, you can go to the website and watch the, the Leaky Gut uh, webinar. And we also have a, a Leaky Gut Protocol ebook that you can download that explains a little bit more. And Tara has a great article on our blog about the benefits of bone broth. So GAPS kind of uh, you know, opened your eyes to healing the gut and the importance of the gut. To, uh, and then you know, what, what happened next? Or, was that after you know, after you learned about bone broth fasting? Was that when you started considering a strict fast, or had you already done a strict water fast, or how how did you you know get to that? Yeah, um, after the gap, that's when I did that first attempt with the juicing for fifteen days, and then I did. Okay, a water so you fast. did gaps, and then a juice fast, and then went okay. into water. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And that lasted, the water lasted like 16 days. Now let's, let's we're s skip around a little bit, but that's, no, that's fine. That, that's what we want to talk about because you have a lot of experience with this. Uh, let's go back to the juice fasting. Now we talked about this a little bit before we started. What do you think are some of the downsides of juice fasting? Because we said, you know, it has a lot of benefits. I'm still right. a fan of juice fasting, but I'm not as big of a fan right. as I used to be. The more that I learn about insulin, the more I learn about blood sugar. So what, what have you learned about that? Yeah, well, exactly the same. <laughs> the glucose spiking, you know, and the, and the insulin, um, which I didn't know back then. But it does have other, you know, good components to it because, I mean... A lot of vitamins, see, minerals, right, you know, right. gives your digestive system a break, so... Exactly. So, and if you're focusing on, if you know that you have a certain system that's compromised in the body, it's good to do like, like certain vegetables and fruits are good for cleansing the liver or the kidneys or, you know, the colon or, you know, certain areas and symptoms of the body, systems of the body. So, uh, I think it's good in that sense too, staying strict, like with the, say for instance, a watermelon fast, um, which helps to clear the kidneys, cleanse the kidneys, open up the kidneys and stimulate them and just regenerate them. So I mean there is there it's there's purposes for, you know, to use them for different things. I mean, mm -hmm. so it's not totally, you know, all bad, but um, uh, I think more in a in a healthy body, especially if you're ingesting that much sugar, but then again like I was mentioning too about the um, watering it down, that could help a lot yeah, with yeah. the sugar, the glucose spikes and yeah, and I think that's important to note is, you know, what you're juicing makes a big difference. And if you're buying juice, if you are buying juice, you know, from a, from, from a store or something, uh, you know, get it first off, you want it to be raw, you want it to be not pasteurized, but you want to also look at what's going in it. You know, a Granny Smith apple is relatively low glycemic, but still higher sugar than something that's just a strictly, you know, green vegetable right. juice. Um, so there are definitely different things that, that go in it, and that's the thing about juicing yourself, is you can control what's going in right. it. You can add ginger, you can add turmeric, you can mm -hmm. add you know, celery as a base, you can, exactly. you can control what's going in it, depending on what your, what your needs are. Mm -hmm. So what would you say, uh, did you feel you know, much difference energy-wise, let's say, uh, with a, a juice fast versus a bone broth fast? Uh, energy-wise, um, bone broth. Uh, they're about the same. Okay. I think. Yeah. I think they're about the same so far as energy, but the the the, the detox, the healing uh, crisis, you know, <laughs> there's those yeah. issues. To yeah. Yeah. And talk to. talk about that because if people are going to do a fast, you know, that's kind of expected that mm -hmm. you're going to go through a period of not feeling good. Right. But then you you break through that, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. So at your in your extended fasts, when has that come? Has it come at different times each time, or is it? Yeah. When? Is it longer? Is it shorter? Is it just kind of hard to say? You just know it's going to come, and you have to be prepared for that mentally. Yeah, it's 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 hard to say yet yeah, because everybody's different, and even for myself, every time I do it, it's different. I mean, never because you're you know when you do cleansing and fasting, it wakes up things. I mean, things that 
maybe in the body for a long period of time that you even like act, you know, like when you like got an accident or something like that and you got an injury or something, those things can come up even though you thought maybe they've healed, they really yeah. haven't and they actually rise up and you see signs of things that you thought were, you know, 20, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah, or interesting. Like kind of a re retracing right, of right. your old, body, old symptoms. Yeah, and the body deals with it though because it wants to heal you, you know, it wants to heal. I wonder, one of the reasons that I ask is because I wonder if you know, we talk a lot about ketosis, and I know that when you've been in your extended fasts, you're you're in ketosis. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if in a juice fast, if you're not as much because you're still yeah. spiking insulin, and so yes. you never give your body a chance to produce ketones. Yeah. But you know, people say in a juice fast, oh, my energy is through the roof, my skin, my mm -hmm. eyes, and so they definitely you know have amazing benefits. Right. But I'm wondering if it's just different than than ketosis, and I think that'd be be kind of hard to say. Right. It uh, would be. Let's talk about your your longest term extended fast. Okay, so you went twenty eight days. Mm -hmm. Okay, and but you went one time. You tried to go. Tw you tried to go as long as you could, and, and you you couldn't. So tell me about what happened or what you were experiencing, and how you were able to listen to your body, and say, okay, now now is not the time. I've got to stop, and then and start again. You know, later down the road. Tell us about yeah. that first time. Um, that was the time when I did the, the juicing for 15 days and then I went into the water um, for 16 days. And yeah, I wanted to go longer, I wanted to go, you know, the goal was 30. And I mean, doing the water fast, sorry to like do a rabbit trail on over here, but um, um, it was for me, it, w it was very spiritual, emotional, physical, everything. I, I desired to have healing, you know, I wanted healing of my body. I wanted to surrender, you know, everything to to my Creator, to to Yahuwah. Um, and so, in order to do that, I believe that I needed. I was directed and led in that direction to to do a water fast. Um, you know, a lot of people dealing with pain issues, which I was also dealing with. A lot of you know um, issues, just skin issues. I mean, you name it, just different things that. Most of us, you know, most people out there, they don't even go to that extent. I mean, they don't, you know, they have symptoms, they're in pain and whatever, and, and I was there too. I mean, I was there, you know, at, at one point until I finally, you know, got to a place with that paradigm shift and the progression of just learning about this amazing body that we've been given, you know, that has been created by our Creator and um, how intelligent it is, you know, to be a self-healing mechanism. And I yeah. never knew any of that, you know. Yeah. And so understanding that it's a self-healing mechanism, understanding that was like eye-opening. Where, I, you know, I, I finally like had a breakthrough where the light bulb went off and it's like, wow, I can do things to assist, to partner, you know, partner with Yahuwah in my life. And that's, and that's partly how you were connected with us because yes. we live in that same paradigm right. and that's what we exactly. you know, teach and preach every day is yeah. that you know, your body is amazing, it was designed with a, a perfect design and if you work with that design, mm -hmm. you move in a healthier direction. But today's exactly. society doesn't. Right, right? just it, the opposite. Yeah, yeah, just the exact opposite. So what happened during that fast that, that really told you I, I need to stop. What were you feeling? Because you were noticing some like electrolyte yes, deficiencies yes, and some had... water retention. And right. So... Yes, that was, uh, yeah, I was very disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah. you made the right decision. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah I did. Yeah, I did. And, and if I knew at the time how to assist the fast, because you can assist the fast without really breaking it, you know, feel, not feeling guilty, like, oh, dang, I didn't, you know, I didn't make it to the 30 days, I didn't make it to the 21 days or 28 days or whatever. But you can assist even a water fast and not totally break, you know, out of the fast yeah. and ruin everything or whatever. So Which, what were you feeling? I was getting edema. Um, and that's water, water retention. retention in your yeah. legs. Yeah, in my toe, yeah, feet, legs. Yeah, I think it was up to my yeah my knees that I was really retaining a lot of water. So you know, if you ever, you know, like uh, I'd say the best example of that is. If you've ever been pregnant, you probably notice what or know what edema is, and you felt your legs swell like that. So you knew that something was going wrong with just water retention, and you listened to your body, and you said, "Okay, I've got to stop." And then, how long did you wait until your next fast? Because you waited. It wasn't like, 
oh, I'm going to go back and eat this weekend, and then I'm going to fast again. You, it was several months that you waited. Oh, yeah. You researched. You kind of learned about what happened the first time. You learned what you could do, like you were just saying, to assist the fast the next time. Mm -hmm. And then the next time, when you were ready, you know, you went in prepared. And, and I think that that's a really important thing to talk about is, you know, you have to be prepared mentally, uh -huh. and you have to be prepared physically. You know, you can't fast, you know, like right now is... Uh, you, you, it's not a good time of the year to, to fast because you said it's winter here in Utah and you're like, I would, I would freeze to death because yeah. you're really cold. Mm -hmm. So tell us, how long did you wait until the next fast? It was probably, I don't know, I guess it was about a year for a water fast. For a water fast. But in between, I was doing um, bone broth. Yeah. So. And so it, in the in-betweens, how long would you go? A couple days, four days? Uh, in between like bone broth fast. In between the big bone, long ones that, that big, year, yeah. Um, I would I would only like attempt to, you know, prepare myself to do it as I was led to do it, maybe once a year or twice a year, you know. But with the shorter bone broth ones. Oh, those. Um, yeah, as my body led and I would just maybe I was trying to do it like once a month. Yeah, yeah okay. Once a month. And go a couple of days or Yeah, or longer, four, however. Four or yeah. five, six days. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Twelve, yeah. So then let's let's talk about the, the twenty eight days, the, the the very long one. Because one of the most interesting things about that is you know, I think everybody is first off really intimidated by that and, and it is a very serious thing and you you know, felt led to do it and felt called to do it. It's not something that we're encouraging uh, you know, people listening to this to go 28 days without eating, but you absolutely can. And we also, you know, always say that if, if we put you on a deserted island for 28 days, mm -hmm. if you had water, you would survive. Your body is not going to, to die from that. Right. But I think one of the most interesting things is how much weight did you lose in 28 days? In 28 days, uh, 25 pounds, which sounds like a lot, but... Not really. Yeah. And your body will only let go of what it needs to. So yeah. if someone who is very thin or you know small, the body's not gonna let go. Of right. It. So it's very you know intelligent. It knows you know it knows how to safeguard you. You know it's always there to protect you. It's always there trying to you know to give you life, not you know trying to harm you. So. Yeah, for someone who's worried about losing too much weight, don't worry about it because that's not even <laughs> an issue. Yeah. Usually. And, and one of the things, I think that you measured your ketone levels during that, right? Yeah. What was your highest ketone reading? The highest ketone was almost an 8. It was like a 7.8. And didn't you say you felt great oh, yeah. during that time? Yeah, yeah, felt great. Yeah. Um, and your blood sugar, you know, if, if you would have gone to the hospital and they checked your blood sugar, right. they would have checked you in as a you know, diabetic coma exactly. or something. But you felt fine because right. when your blood sugar dropped, your ketones rose so high mm -hmm. that that actually, you know, was your body's fuel and you actually felt great. Right, that was amazing. I think yeah. that's really interesting. Yeah, and yeah, that and that was all new when you introduced me to Dr. Pompa and learning and listening to his guests on on his uh, on his show on his YouTube video um, about the ketones and about you know the measuring and all that. I had no clue back when I did my other fasts, but yeah. um, it was really good and neat to kind of keep track of that and just see that what the body was doing kind of internally. So, and you talked to. Oh, I mean, you talked about you know getting cold, like doing a, a fast in the winter time. And I loved. I've been kind of led to do a fast, but I guess a bone broth would be more um, <laughs> appropriate for this time of the yeah. year. But I never knew like me getting cold the way I do. And I know only other person that I know personally that's gotten that cold is is Tia, who's done a fast too. Um, my daughter. Um, she's another one. But I'm wondering if it has to do with like. A thyroid or adrenal um, issues that I'm guessing that if I fasted, I would be I would be pretty cold. You know, you guys are both thin too, so so I'm sure it does have you know something to do with your your thyroid and just your metabolism. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that it's a, a harmful or a bad thing at all. So the last thing I want to ask is you know if anybody's out there listening and, and you had to give them some advice on you know any of the things that we're talking about a, a, a four day fast. Uh, a bone broth fast, a juice fast, a water fast, what are some basic recommendations? Like just to, to give you an example, I would say, you know, be prepared and start, I would say start small too. Oh yeah. So, so what are some that you would add on to that? Um, well, if, 
Yeah, start small, start, do something that, like a, like even a juice fast might be for someone, might be more, not as intimidating um, to them. Uh, I think mean, that's where I started, so yeah. I mean, that's, it's a good place to start. Um, but yeah, just like I said, like more vegetables than, than fruits or watering it down would be a good place to start. I don't even know if I answered your other question. I, I, <laughs> did I even? <laughs> but um, so... Um, also, just yeah, like you said, be prepared. Um, do as much study as you need to um, in you know whatever information that you want to learn. Uh, like you said about the my my issues with my kidneys, I found out that came out because of the first fast that I did. Yeah. Um, that I had, I, I kind of knew I had kidney issues, but didn't know how to what extent. You know, they were compromised. So that kind of brought that out more, and I paid more attention to my kidneys the next time around when I did the longer fast, the 28-day fast, which I planned to do 30 days, but because, you know, life happens and my family wanted to go camping and they didn't want to be fasting while we went camping, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I had to cut it. And that's another, 20. you know, recommendation I would say is, you know, look at your calendar. If you're going to go a week, make sure you don't have a birthday party coming up at the end right. of the week, or really almost any obligation, because... You just don't know how you're going to feel. Right. And you definitely don't want to be, you know, a, a strenuous exercise or just oh, doing yeah. too much while during your fast. So, you know, plan it out, be prepared, start small, start with a juice fast, start with a bone broth yeah. fast, start with a couple days. Uh, a big thing that I encourage is intermittent fasting mm -hmm. or even every other day fasting yeah. just to get used to the idea of not eating right. because it is an intimidating thought at first. But it gets easier and easier and easier as your blood sugar control gets better and better. Um, and and it, it is downhill from there. So you have to start somewhere um, and, and you're not going to start with, you know, 28 day fast or even a, a seven day fast. I would say start small and just make sure that you're going to respond. OK, have a plan, be mentally prepared. Uh, I think those are all great pieces of advice. Mm -hmm. What about the ketone meter, the blood sugar meter? Is that something you'd recommend? Oh, yeah, I would recommend that. that yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, especially for yeah, even a little bit longer fast or even the short fast. Yeah, like being on a bone broth fast or a whey water just to kind of see yeah. what your numbers are. Yeah, and I'd be super curious because I just don't know what somebody's numbers do on a juice fast. Yeah, because you're still yeah. spiking insulin, right. so I don't think that it's going it to drop that low. Especially, you know, if you're doing you know six six juices a day or mm -hmm. so, your your insulin's never really going to drop that low. Your ketones right. are never really going to rise, mm -hmm. but yet you're still just reducing your calories so much. You're going to lose weight. Yeah, you're yeah. getting so many vitamins, minerals, nutrients, enzymes that you're going to get increased energy. It's still going to boost your health, but really in the long term, I mean, one of the goals that we talk about is reducing the insulin and reducing the reducing blood sugar and reducing insulin mm -hmm. response. So I would say that, you know, juice fasting isn't the the, the thing that I recommend the most. Um, but yeah, it is a place to start. Mm -hmm. And it gives your digestion, you know, a break, which our body digesting food is like taking so much energy, you know, 80% of, of our body's energy is digesting food. So even doing a juice fast would be excellent. I mean, giving that body time to rest and actually concentrate on things that it, you know, hadn't had time to do before, you know, other healing in the body that, you know, needs to be taken care of. And that's a good way to, to start it out. But Awesome. All right, well, thank you, Tara. Uh, this has been great. Like I said, you have, you know, the most experience with fasting of, of really anybody that I know. Um, and so, uh, is there something you want yeah, to add something? Yeah, I want to add something. Um, and for anybody who is doing like a bone broth fast or a whey water fast or a, even a water fast especially, um, usually after the third day, it gets easier. That's know? why we tell people to try to go yeah, four. Yeah, you know, try to try go Not four. two or three because right. that's usually three is the worst day, mm -hmm. I'd say. And mm -hmm. four is like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going to go five. Right. I'm going to go six. Right. Right, so just like, yeah, just, just be encouraged that there is an end point where you will stop having the cravings. Your body will actually just say, okay, I guess you're going to do it. Let's let's yeah. go for it. Yeah, some of us can't go from, you know, breakfast to lunch without feeling bad. Mm -hmm. So you're going to feel bad. There's going to be some right. times where you're going to feel bad, but that's going to improve and it's going to get better. And so try to go four days is kind of a magic number. Um, yeah, so that's a good thing to add. Yes, yeah. so... Um, 
Yeah, I just encourage anybody who yeah desires real health, you know, like you talked about, and that's the excellent, most excellent way to do it is by fasting. You know, it's an ancient um, strategy, you know, a tool yeah. that we've been given, we've been blessed with, you know, uh, to combat the, you know, disease and the toxic burden that is plaguing all of us in this toxic world we live in. So, I mean, it's an excellent uh, resource and just a tool to take advantage of and that we are all able to do. We've been given that that ability. You know? Yeah, and uh, I told you before, I said, you know, a lot of people are intimidated by fasting, but all you do is nothing. Right. <laughs> so, it's the easiest, yeah, actually, yeah, that yeah. way, in that way, because you don't have the juicing. I mean, juicing takes a lot of, you know, juicing the fruits and the vegetables, buying everything. And in today's it's, society, it's not easy to do nothing. Right, right. But yeah, take some time and relax and reset your body, reset your mind, and, and renew yourself. Uh, through fasting. I think that's a great a great thing to end on. So thank you for this interview. We appreciate you. We appreciate your experience and, and you sharing it with us. Uh, and we hope to continue to, to learn from you and, and learn with you and teach you and all learn together yeah. and just as we approach real health, like you said. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.